Dury Arms TM22-18 in the US. Uh, I think it's imported by Rock Island Armories or Arms Corps. Uh, same model number TM22. And we'll do a quick tear down and see what it's all about. It comes apart pretty quick and painlessly. So one screw out at the top right there in the front. And the forend comes right off. Set that to the side. I already had this apart, but it did come apart by hand. Barrel comes out nice and easy. We'll have a look at that after. The charging handle is pretty quick and simple. One screw pulls right out. Doesn't seem very beefy though. It's an awfully small bolt that holds that together. Make sure you undo that before we take the top rail off. The top rail, two bolts. comes apart pretty painlessly it's much easier than the Savage 64 I'll say that which takes much more to pull even just a, the full tear down on the 64 is much more difficult and time consuming so you can see the slide assembly there uh, it's just a notch in the front here notched in the front and same in the back just a little notch that it sits in. The bolt return spring. Just push a little pressure on the forward and the whole thing slides out nice and easy. The machining on it's nice. Looks good. Uh, protrusion on the... It's got a rectangular uh, firing pin. And it protrudes just a touch past where the breech face is there. So it should be alright. I'm guessing everything I've seen so far says that these things fire pretty consistently, so no light strikes, but we'll find that out when we get to actually shoot it. It takes commercial spec. I didn't bring the wrench, but this is commercial spec, but they're all the same size, so I'm, you can pretty much put any AR stock you want on there. Uh, this is the exact same grip that came on my June JR Carbine uh, 9mm, and it's exactly the same. Except this one has a plug. I don't know if the JR Carbine did or does. I never really noticed. But uh, finish on it is decent. It's, it's been banging around in my truck for a week. And uh, there's no marks on it or anything else. Uh, now the trigger group. Um, you can see this This pin is the other. On this side we have the uh, safety and which is odd because we're used to it going the other way, but and the pin being at the back, but this one's at the front, but makes no difference. It's in a good location. So on the other side though, it comes through the, you can see where it comes through the trigger there. Hopefully you can see that it comes through the trigger and out the other side and it has a C clip on it. Now these are all push roll pins and they're hollow. So they're just spring pins in there. They're not like a typical gun pin. So I'm assuming that that whole thing comes out in pieces and it's not just a drop in trigger. Um, let's see. Now you can see the trigger pushes this release back, lets the hammer fly. And I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a pin way in there it's probably harder to see like that but there's a pin behind that release and that's your spring force for your trigger it's all off that pin so I'm assuming if you take this handle off there's a spring in there so putting it back together you simply drop the bolt back in put that in the front notch Compress the spring, which 
isn't too bad because then it's only a 22 so there you go back together top rail goes back on and take the bolts up So I'm not sure if a trigger, AR trigger group would, would drop in there if you removed all that. I'm having, I have my doubts. I'd, I'd have to take this pin out, take that pin out and measure it and make sure it'll even fit through the trigger group. And I don't know, it doesn't say anything about the trigger. The trigger is very light. It's got a hair trigger for sure. Put the other, put the charging handle back in there. Sorry about the shadows. It's not very well lit in here. I got lights on order. Let's inch that down. Get it back up here where you can see it. So we'll have a quick look at the at the barrel. But it's well machined. It looks like it's been worked by hand on the to smooth the feed ramp and stuff, but it it's it's in good shape. Doesn't look uh, like anything out of the ordinary, but it looks pretty good. So we'll fit this back in there. Notch side down. Pops right back in. Obviously, the wrench that comes with the gun will makes it easy to get that on and off. Slide your forend in, and you'll notice that it has this notch in the top. It's built so it fits right in the in that rail and slides right in. So once you put this in there, bolt that down. It's totally free floating barrel, and I like I actually like the simple design simple design quick and easy if you have to take it apart out in the, the range or something it's going to be nothing i'll show you the trigger pull so it barely moves and it's pretty quick to uh you see it and it'll break before you even know it it's only two and a half pounds they say and I believe it because I barely got a finger on it there. So I hope uh, this helps out anybody that's trying to decide whether to buy one or not. I know there was some controversy on the on the barrel in the states on some of the guns the guys tested. They had did not have half twenty eights. This actually does. I've got pictures of it with the muzzle brake off my JR carbine fit right on here, no problem. So it is half 28. So you can put anything on half 28 on the front. You got air grips, you got air uh, buttstock, and you can put a wide array of stuff on this. I'm sure once I get it all uh, tacked to cooled out, it'll look even better. And I'll go have some fun plinking away with it. All right, so hope this helps. And uh, if you're looking to get one, hopefully you can find them in stock and uh, pick one up for yourself. Thanks for watching.